In this week in review, a moment to savour as NITV goes free to air. The occasion also marked by a live concert beamed around the nation. And police move in on Brisbane's tent embassy at Musgrave Park. Hello and welcome, I'm Charmaine Ingram. It's been a remarkable week for Indigenous broadcasting. National Indigenous television is now available free to air around Australia. And we're still celebrating history in the making. Five, four, three, two, one. There was joy and more than a little emotion. Welcome, that's my, my pleasure. What are, what are you? The signal switched on today at 12 o'clock on the 12th of the 12th, 2012. Celebrations kicked off at the SBS headquarters and in the heart of the nation at Uluru. Getting to this point has been decades in the making and a true national and community effort. NITV News took to the airwaves just five years ago. Today's change will mean Indigenous stories can be seen by a potential 24 million viewers. Over in Redfern, the National Congress of Australia's First Peoples celebrated with popcorn and tuned in to the live switchover. It is about us taking control of the stories we want to hear and, and we, need, we know there's a lot of diversity in uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander stories right across the country and this gives us the opportunity to tell those stories but to hear those stories as well. It's the first time in our history that Indigenous television programming has been available to everyone all around the country. This year, NITV became a part of the SBS family, a move many say makes SBS complete. I just love the way um, everyone at SBS is embracing it, but you know, just watching the launch um, and, and saying their, their family is complete, the circle is complete with us as the First Nations people. Ma rakareke ane te kitea he kaupapa nui uh, mō te whānau whānui o Whitman. I te mea uh, koira te kaupapa o Whitman ki te tautoko NITV me etahi atu uh, teihana o te ao takitaki. The Indigenous Affairs Minister Jenny Macklin was at Uluru for the launch. During exchanges of pity or kulaman that symbolise NITV storytelling gifts to the nation, Ms Macklin embraced one of the traditional owners in what some speculated was an awkward attempt at reconciliation. NITV is available on Digital Channel 34 and all its other platforms. Brooke Boney, NITV News. It's free at last. Uluru was front and centre in our free-to-air launch. At its base is the community of Murujulu. The people there became the focus for the 2007 intervention. Now it's subject to stronger future laws. Elder Bob Randall says little has improved since the army rolled in. This is where the, so the army was here. This is where they camped, right in front of my house. So I was able to talk to those Aboriginal guys. They were there. They were stunned. They didn't know what they were doing here. The Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, says the federal government is committed to constitutional recognition for our mob. And in an exclusive interview with NITV News, she's defended Labor's record on Indigenous affairs. I think Labor has always been the party of profound change for Indigenous Australians, whether it's been uh, native title, whether it was uh, Gough Whitlam uh, pouring sand into Vincent Ligiari's hands, or whether it's our closing the gap strategy now. Labor has always been the party of profound change for Indigenous Australians. And I'm proud that as a government we're trying to take the next step uh, we've delivered the apology and that was an amazing moment, but now we're trying to take the next step of constitutional recognition, as well as the huge investments that we're putting into health and education and employment opportunities to make a practical difference. The HP Billiton has sold its stake in the controversial Woodside Natural Gas Project in the Browse Basin off the Kimberley Coast. If the joint venture goes ahead, the gas will be processed at James Price Point, north of Broome. The billion dollar sale to PetroChina was reportedly sparked by BHP's long-standing opposition to the site. An art dealer in the Northern Territory has received a warning from the consumer watchdog for falsifying details about a painting she sold on eBay. She's now provided a court enforceable, undertaking not to commit another breach. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission fears artists can be taken advantage of due to their remoteness. Derek Farrell from the ACCC displayed the painting which 
he says did not meet the requirements to protect both artist and consumer. There have been a lot of allegations about falsities in the Indigenous art world. This is one matter that we've investigated, ultimately uh, determined that there were falsities in the Certificate of Authenticity. The woman at the centre of the case, Angela Delgiaco, says the accusations against her from the ACCC are incorrect. A-League now, where Perth Glory is sitting eighth on the ladder. I caught up with midfielder Travis Dodd to discuss the season's highs and lows so far. For a team that contested last year's A-League Grand Final, the pressure is starting to mount. The club is in a hurry to move from the lower end of the ladder. Perth Glory has lost its last two matches and only managed two goals in five games. For this week in review, we'll leave you with just a few more highlights of our free-to-air launch. See you again soon.